Hello, this is Justin at the Tech Train here again. And in today's 10th installment of the programming series, Learning to Program with Small Basic, I'm going to be covering something called arrays. What exactly is an array? Well, an array is simply a numbered list of items of information that we want the computer to remember. First of all, if we think about what a variable is, first of all, if I had a variable, I can store one single piece of information in that variable, like that, um, which simply stores that string there inside this one variable. The problem with that is it is only possible to store a single bit of information in that variable. But what if I want to have a list of names, several names perhaps to choose from? Well, what I can do is instead of creating a single variable that contains one name, I can create a list of variables and number each one of them. So here, my first name could be Justin. Uh, the second name could be Bob. Name three equals Eric. Uh, name four equals Jack. There we go. So that's now created, uh, rather than four separate variables, it's created one single list called name, and that list contains four items, each of which has been numbered like this. Now, we can see how this would work if we then put in uh, some text window dot right line instructions for the user and um, please enter at number one to four. And then we'll ask the user to uh, enter that number and store, uh, oops, num equals text window dot read. So we'll store whatever the user writes inside the variable num. And now what we'll do is we'll say text window dot write line. You chose and now what we're going to do is concatenate or add to that string there um, the item in the array called name at position num, which is the number that the user has just entered. So we have an array, a list called name. That list has four positions, which are numbered one to four. We have asked the user for a number and we store that in a variable num. And on this line, we're looking at the list called name and we're finding whatever item is at the position numbered num, which is what the user's just entered. So if I run this program, please enter a number one to four and I type in number three, you can see it says you chose Eric because Eric was item number three. We try that again. Please enter a number one to four, enter four. You chose Jack, press enter key to continue. So there we are, Jack is position four. So we can refer to the items in this array called name by referring to their numbered positions. So what can we do with this? Well, we're going to try a couple of little programs here. Uh, one is going to be a funny name generator for um, a, some sort of computer game. And the other is going to be an insult generator. So we're going to try uh, both programs. What I suggest you do before we move on, though, is have a little look at this program that I've just written there. So you've got a simple array called name you've got numbered positions and notice that we're using these square brackets around the number position here and also over here when we're referring to the number position in the array we surround that number by square brackets you can find those on your keyboard just after the letter p on the right hand side so we have an array we have square brackets we have numbered positions 
and then we can refer to that array as long as in square brackets we put whatever number we're looking for afterwards. So try doing this little program yourself. So you've seen me write this, you've seen that in front of you. Pause the video in just a second and then switch over to Small Basic. See if you can write that program yourself. See what mistakes you make, see what problems you make. Perhaps you forget a bracket or you forget your concatenation symbol or speech marks. You'll almost certainly make a mistake. Most people do. That's absolutely fine and to be expected. Just have a think about what mistake you made so that next time you can be a little more aware of that. So I'll be right here if you want to pause the video and then come back and we'll look at making this name generator. OK, then, so let's have a look at making a name generator. Now, what we want with this name is to have a name that is made up of three parts. Uh, so we're going to have a title, name and then description. For example, Lord Wobbly the Insane or Sir um, Pimple the Spotty or um, Lady um, Bertha the Magnificent, and so on. So you get the idea, we're gonna have um, names generated randomly using a title, a name, and a description. So titles will be in one list or one array, names, will be in a second array and descriptions will be in a third array. So we want to have three separate arrays or three lists with those names. So let's start with this first of all. So I'm gonna start off with my title array and we don't forget, we always have to have numbers afterwards. So what's the first one? Well, we'll have Lord, uh, then we'll have title two, equals uh, lady then we'll have title three oops title three equals uh, sir then we'll have title four equals uh, baron and my last one for the moment but you can have as many of these as you want uh, is going to be um, let's see what have I got Earl there we go. So those are my five titles. Now my names are going to be in a separate array. So because this is a separate list, a new array, I'm going to start back with one. So this is the first item in the name array. So let's have uh, bubbles. Now what you can do to save a little bit of time here um, is if you write out something like this, so the name of the array, square brackets equals that, we can copy and paste that three, four, five, and then put our numbers in afterwards, two, three, four, five, um, and then put in all our words. It just saves a little bit of time. It's up to you, you can write them out one by one if you want to. Uh, so let's have uh, pimples, let's have, um, Flatulence, let's have um, burps. Uh, I'm obviously not going for very sensible names. You're probably appreciating that already. Um, name five, I could have thought of these beforehand, but let's just see how my mind works. Uh, so let's have um, furball. There we go. And now finally, the description. So again, the description is going to be a new, I can't spell description, there we are, description, new array. So once again, we start with zero, uh, with one. So now we're gonna have a new array and this one I'm gonna have the um, mighty. There we go. Then description. And I'm just going to copy and paste a few of these. Um, I'm doing five for each of these, but you don't have to have five for all of them. In fact, it doesn't matter if the number of items in each array is different. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do, uh, let's get rid of furball. Let's get rid of that one. So I've only got four items in this array. 
five in this one, and I'll do six in this array, so that you see um, <clears throat> that the number of arrays, that the number of items in each array doesn't have to be the same. So we're going to have the magnificent, magnificent. Uh, we're going to have um, the stinking, um, the hungry, the lost, and the confused. There we go. Now, something that we'll need to think about are the spaces in between these words. So obviously after the word Lord, we're needing to have a space before the next word. So let's just put some spaces after each of those words. And the same is true for the name as well. We'll need a space after bubbles before whichever one of these we're going to end up using. So I'll put a space at the end of those. But we don't need spaces here because this is the last one in the sequence. So there we are. We've now got three separate arrays. And what we need to do now is choose a random item from each array. So to choose a random item from each array, we'll need to use random numbers. And the best way of doing that is to use um, a variable to temporarily store the random numbers we're going to come up with. So I'm going to say a equals math dot get random number. And this is going to be the number, the random number that I'm choosing from the title array. Now the title array has five items in it. So I want a random number between one and five. So for A, I'm going to put a number five in brackets there, like that. Then what I'm going to do is have a second variable. I'll call this one B. And B is going to have a random number that will let me choose one of these names. Now there are only four of these names. So for this one, I want a random number between one and four. So for B, I'm going to make that a random number between one and four, like that. And then finally C is going to be for the description. So I want to choose a random number that will help me pick one of these items. So that's going to be between one and six, as there are six descriptions. So this number here needs to be a six. So here you can see how these numbers correspond to the number of items in each of those three arrays. So now at this point, I've made my arrays. I've now chosen my three random numbers. It's finally time to put it all together into an output into some output that will allow me to insult whoever runs the program or to create a, a, a name rather for whoever runs the program. So let's have our text window. So our text window dot right line. And here we don't need speech marks. We don't need um, any uh, strings whatsoever because we're pulling all of our names, all of our words from these arrays. So the first thing we want is to have the title. So we want to begin with the title. So we're going to be picking an item from the title array, but in brackets, what number do we put? Well, we don't want to put one of these numbers because if we put a, a three, for example, then it would always be Sir. And we don't want that. We want it to be a random item. So as here, we got a random number between one and five and put it in A. What we need here is to say whatever number A was, find that item from our title array. So now what we'll do is add to that or concatenate now the name. So now what we need to do is write name as that's going to be the second array. But again, we don't want to put a number in brackets because if we put the number four, for example, we would always have burps as our name and we want it to be random every time. 
So again, as we got a random number between one and four and put that in a variable b, what we need to do here is put a b in brackets and say, go and look at the name array, the name list, and find the item at position b. Whatever number has been randomly put in the variable b, get that number and use that item. And then finally, we're gonna have our description. So description, and that of course is going to have a C in the brackets. So C around the number between one and six, whatever number we come up with, it's that number that we want to look up in our description array. So if that random number was three, then we would look at the description array, find position three, and pull out the words, the stinky. And there we are. Let's close our round brackets as well, because don't forget we opened them over here. We must close them at the end. And now we can run our program. And there we are. We've got Sir Burps the Hungry. If we run it again, this time we have Earl Pimples the Mighty. And one more time, Earl Pimples the Stinky. Earl Pimples is popular. Uh, Earl, Flat, Earl Flatulence the Mighty. There we go. Um, so you can see how we've been able to create a fun little program that allows us to generate random names uh, for a computer game or a story or something just by using three of these arrays. Now, if we were to add another item to the name array, let's say I decided uh, to add item five to my name array, and this time um, I would call this... Um, Fudge. What I would need to do is come down here and say, ah, now B was my random number that would help me choose an item from my name array that used to have four items, which is why I have a four in brackets, but now I've added an item. I now have five items, so I'd now need to change that to a five so that there's a chance that that one would be used. It hasn't been this time, Baron Pimples the Confused, and Sir Pimples the Confused, and Earl Burps the Mighty. Now we haven't got it yet, but there we are, it's all random. Of course, the more items you have in your array, the more you're going to end up with um, more and more random different names. And you can work out the number of possible different names by multiplying together the number of items in each list. So in this case, I have um, five items in my title list, I have five items in my name list, and I have six items in my description list. If I multiply five by five by six, that gives me 150. So this program can now generate 150 different names. And the more you add, the more you'll be able to do that. If you had 10 in each item, that would be 10 by 10 by 10, which would be a thousand different possible names. It adds up quite quickly. So what I'd like you to do before we start building the insult generator is to think about um, doing this yourself. So coming up with a random name generator like this uh, so that you can uh, practice creating the arrays and using these random numbers. So have a little play with this. Um, what I will do is um, leave this video and do the random insult generator in a second video. So I'll do that next. So once you've had a little practice at doing this name generator, head over to the next tutorial, which will be number 11, and uh, have a little look at taking this slightly further and looking at generating your insult maker. So I'll see you in that tutorial.